first question I ask them is, have you interviewed yourself? Gotcha. Have you interviewed your life? Identify what you've done in the past. Because it's kind of hard and difficult to identify what you want to do in the future if you haven't already evaluated what you've done already. For every year that you lived on this earth, we need to document what you've done. The highs, the mids, and the lows. All these realizations start to happen through the exercise for them to say, yo, I'm not going to run that play over there. I'm going to tap into what I already got going on over here. <laughs> if you stick to the script, okay. I guarantee you, your business, your relationships, your mental health, everything that you desire when it comes to pursuing happiness, joy, and peace is there. This is your boy Marcus here. Welcome to another episode of the Digital Empire Podcast, where we talk about everything digital investments and entrepreneurship. And y'all, this one, one of the cream of the crop right here. All right. <laughs> this man right here is the king of playmaking. All right. This man changes the game when it comes to running the place. He is a Look, I'm talking to you all every single episode about how to be able to create a six-figure digital empire. And some of y'all haven't taken action yet. Y'all just, for some reason, life haven't slapped you in the face yet where it's like, yo, I'm tired of being at the place that I'm in right now. I'm tired of working my nine to five. I want to create a business. I want to become an entrepreneur. I'm tired of working for someone else when they don't even care about me. Look, I have something for you. I was working in nine to five, literally not even a year ago. It's going to be a year this year that I have been able to leave my nine to five to be able to come to you guys and show you how I was able to leave working at Papado, 101 Steak, Ruth Chris, all hospitality places, y'all, to now being able to break 100K months. Literally, this is what happened. Let me tell you. I was able to break 100K months in six months, to be more exact. And I'm going to show you exactly how I was able to do it and how exactly I was able to do it from working a job, creating multiple four to five figures while working my nine to five to then leaving my nine to five to then scaling my business. Y'all, I'm going to show you how to fund your business without using your own money. There's so many things in this book that I could be charging tens of thousands of dollars and I'm going to share with you how exactly I did it and with pennies of the dollar. It costs $10, y'all. Worst case scenario is you learn something more and profit off of it. Okay, so look, click the link, the digitalempireebook.com. Get the ebook, y'all. Massive executor and he's analytical like myself. So you know we had to bring this man on here. You know he had to bring my man, CEO Matty J. What's going on, boss? Appreciate you, Marcus. Man. Run to the play. <laughs> I'm glad we finally. Facts. We finally got to push the play button on this. Bam. This was almost six months in the making. Yes, sir. We were supposed to do it in Dubai. That never worked out. <laughs> then we were supposed to do it before Dubai. Because that was Invest Fest. Actually, it was longer than six months. It's probably a year. It's probably a year. <laughs> Invest Fest coming up. That, it is coming right back around. That's crazy. Yeah, it's been, but look, everything happens in due time. Amen. So I want you to introduce to the audience, you know, pretty much who you are, what you do, how do you serve people? Because my audience don't know who you are, bro. Man, I'm, I'm glad I get to introduce myself. <laughs> so my name is CEO Matty J, a.k.a. Mr. Document the Process. Born and raised in L.A. Currently reside between Atlanta, Georgia and Dubai. And my main primary service right now is helping people turn their past into cash. A lot mm. of people struggle with sales. Know when to sell and when not to sell. Because I got suspended two times for selling candy. That's crazy. I was disturbing the peace in classes. <laughs> Bro, right. I think thinking back when I was selling candy in high school, I did all of that, but I don't think I actually registered like you did. Bro. About like what we had to do to really sell candy. For sure, you get what I'm saying. I think we just did it. Like it was just it was all just, based on money. Nah, yeah, it was just like here you a go. A lot of value <laughs> that we were able to learn in that process. For sure, and it was very basic. Thinking back when I was selling candy in high school, I don't. I did all of that, but I don't think I actually registered like you did Word. about like what we had to do to really sell candy. For sure, you get what I'm saying. I think we just did it. Like it was just it was all just, based on money. Nah, yeah, it was just like here you a go. A lot of value <laughs> that we were able to learn in that process. For sure, and it was very basic. You know what I'm saying? For sure. It wasn't something that was like I'm pretty sure there is a legit. You know, there are plenty of candy businesses out there. You get what I'm for saying? Sure. But like on a scale, we weren't doing it at scale. For sure. For sure. You know what I'm saying? So like, how were you able to convert? Like that was the starting point. Candy. What was the next step though? So right after I started selling candy, obviously I graduated out of high school. Right. I had a market because I was in high school, but once mm. I graduated, I couldn't run that plane no more. Right. I ain't about to be selling candy in, in college. So <laughs> I graduated. Um, I don't even know how I graduated, but I graduated. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I graduated and then I moved into party promotion. Oh, I, I did that in college too. Bruh, I, of course. That's, that's that, like these are like thing. natural things that yeah. happen. Yeah. If you are social, mm -hmm. I'm very, I'm, what do they call it? They gotta say introvert and extrovert. I think yeah. I'm omnivert. Like I can play yeah, both like sides. Yeah, like a both sides. Yeah. Ambivert. That's what it's ambivert, called. Ambivert. Mm -hmm. I like that. 
So when it comes to parties, I love dancing. And I saw how much love, support, attention, respect I was getting mm. at these parties. And naturally, because I wanted to go to these parties, again, because I want to have candy for free, I want to get these parties for free. And the best way to get the parties for free Facts. was to turn it into a business, a side hustle. And that's yeah. what I did. I got invited to become a sub-promoter. Mm. For those who don't know, a sub-promoter is somebody who's under a promoter. So usually you have like a club owner, and yep. then you have a party promoter who partners up with the club owner. Mm -hmm. And the party promoter who basically invests all the money, sets up yep. dates, times, all that good stuff, then hires sub promoters to promote under. Mm -hmm. So I was a like affiliate. Yeah, affiliate, basically. Mm -hmm. I don't got to do no work. All I got to do <laughs> is tell people about the play. That's it. That's it. So I was getting paid $5 for every person I had come to the party. I'm running the numbers in my head right the now. Incentiv <laughs> the incentivization <laughs> there was so crucial. I'm like, yo, I would have done this for free. I do it naturally for free. Mm -hmm. People ask me, where's that tonight? Where are you going to be at tonight? Naturally, I'm going to tell you. But now I'm getting paid for it? All you got to do is say my name at the door? Oh, say less. So that was the play I was running. I was making around three hundred, four hundred dollars a week. I had no expenses at this time, so I was up. You bring like sixty people a week, bro? No, not a week per night. Like we was running per night plays. You were making per bro. night. I meant to say per night. We had a party every day of the week, and sometimes it was two times a day. So we'll have a day so party. You were bringing three hundred people a yes. day. Easy, easy. Our parties have had like eight hundred people, Bruh. If anybody knows anything about LA, there's two parties that everybody knew about: Club Kiss mm -hmm. and uh, OG Cycles. Anybody in LA <laughs> say serious? This they were like, "Yo, I remember those days, Bruh. Yeah, man. Three hundred seven days a week or five days a week? Or well, how many day, how was, many parties was well, probably it? the day that we did have party was probably Sunday. So six days a week. Yeah, three hundred, bro. That's eighteen hundred dollars a week. Killing <laughs> on average. Are you making almost ten grand a month? It's like yeah. eight grand, a little less than eight grand. By God's grace, I was killing the game, bro. And what? I didn't have no expenses. I ended up getting out an office in Beverly Hills because of the place I was running. That's how much? Right across the street from the Beverly Center on La Cienega and Beverly. Bruh. Going crazy. Why'd you stop? <laughs> stop throwing parties? Yeah. There's a whole transition store. I don't know if you want to jump there. Bro, we going right through it, man. All right, cool. So it got to a point where my expenses and my lifestyle increased. Oh, Remember, it was all facts. good and dandy. $10,000, $12,000, $15,000 a month is good. Only if you're not spending $20,000, $30,000 a month. <laughs> I was like, why would somebody leave that profession? That's what I was thinking. Like, Right, right, right. And so, like I said, I had an office in Beverly Hills. And if I didn't have any financial sense or literacy mm. when it comes to investing, putting your money in the proper places. So I had all this money. I'm like, yo, what do I need to do with it? Oh, let me just upgrade my office. So I'm paying $14,000 for a custom bathroom. Yes, floors, drywall, electrical, for TVs. 000. Just because? Yeah, I didn't have nothing else to do with my money. I'm like, <laughs> let me just upgrade my spots. <laughs> Yeah, man. To this day, actually, I don't care how I spend money because I know how to generate the income. Well, yeah, of course. At any time. Actually, yeah. Right. Yeah. But at the end of the day, like Dave Ramsey says, you can't out earn your stupidity. Right. Right. Some people try to out earn their irresponsible ways of spending. Mm -hmm. But I don't have no problem living a lifestyle. If I had to check the check. Like if I made ten thousand, or I made a hundred thousand, or I made two hundred thousand, and I spent two hundred thousand, I don't have no problem living like that. As long as it don't over, right? As I, long as you're managing it correctly, right? Correct. Mm -hmm. A lot of people have this stigma of living paid to check as being a negative thing. Everything mm -hmm. has pros and cons, right? Of course. So the check to check play can be done as long as you understand the pros and the cons, right? Right. So now, are you doing that currently? Now at this point? No, no. So. During that time of high school, college, that was a play. But now I have responsibilities that when it comes to family, right, investments. So I can't run that play because one of the cons of check to check was emergencies. Yeah, if, facts. If you had an emergency and you live in check to check, you're not going to be able to handle it. You're going to do that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's true. So once I started to realize that, I started to move it over to, of course, making sure that I'm spending properly, I'm investing properly, I'm saving properly, things of that nature. That's actually how I tapped into Dave Ramsey. I said, yo, I can't be living like this no more. Now Man. that I'm in a different space, a different season, I need to learn how to properly allocate my funds he does teach you how to allocate your funds yeah at yeah, least sure. uh the you know the three to six months of expenses having that's a thousand dollars saved that's why i tapped into debt free it. and at least that principle of for course sure. we you know we like opm but like in general like i would agree that those steps in the beginning stages for sure are needed for sure especially for sure. if you're living the check the check lifestyle and beginning that family and you're for needing sure. that 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 emergency fund for sure so like now that you got the crib you you spending 14 grand on it you like you know what <laughs> it wasn't even a crib it was an office that i turned into a living space so like work live. oh so it was both yeah i made it both and then you spent 14 grand on the from scratch on, like on, the, on the bathroom alone yeah just the bathroom 
Bruh. Just the bathroom. Just <laughs> the f- think about it. It's from scratch. No Bruh. floor, no walls, no electricity, no nothing. I had to do everything from scratch. So I had a contractor that I hired to be able to do things for oh, me. That's he did. expensive. Yeah, he didn't tell me how much things cost, but Bruh. I had the money. So I was like, I, pay, I was paying them as I go. What do we got to do? Here, what we got to do? Right, what we got to do? What we got to do? The crazy part about that story is that I was there for about two, no, three years. And then the moment that I was done with everything, I got to notice that we had to leave the building because the, the owners were going to sell it. Wait, wait. So I built wait. all that stuff on you, that property. You probably made the appreciation of for that sure. property go up for sure. and they're selling it. For sure. That was intentional. For I'm sure. convinced that's intentional. Well, to be honest, I think they tore everything down. They were selling oh, the dang. land for real. Yeah, they tore everything down. So I finished everything. And it was for nothing. I didn't know that nothing about. Pain, bro. I didn't even think about the long term <laughs> that I didn't even own this land. I didn't own the property. I was you were doing it like you owned it, though. Yeah, the lease was like thirty three thousand dollars a month. What? Yep. It wasn't just me though. It was me and my business partner that had um had our, shared the lease. Yeah. So that's fifteen grand ish. I had to pay a little bit more had... than him, but yeah. For some... <laughs> yeah, I mean, it was all the money we were making. It was nothing. And I definitely don't regret it because to be able to say that you have an office and living space in Beverly Hills, is all in La Cienega, yeah, Beverly, yeah. literally the Beverly Center, the most luxurious mall in Southern California is the Beverly Center. Yeah. It's right across the street, like right there. Oh. So, so you also were in a nice area too. The nicest. I was able to leverage oh. that situation. No wonder that thing was 30 grand. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> Would you live in LA now? Right now, nah. Wherever I want to live, I'll live there right now. But I live in between Atlanta and Dubai right now because that's the season I'm in right now. But like knowing that inflation has gone up, taxes is stupid at the moment. Like how the living is in LA. Now, I do know that when you get a certain amount of money, inflation doesn't really matter. Right. But <laughs> like, it doesn't it matter. Matters, but you, it doesn't. It, exactly. So like, but in your case, it doesn't matter where you stay at at this point. No. Well, at this point, if you stay in Dubai, it's way more expensive than Cali. At this the point. way I live, my lifestyle is actually cheaper in Dubai, to be honest with you. I got so many resources and things I don't have to pay for in Dubai. Really? That it's cheaper. Like what? It's more expensive for me living in Atlanta than this Dubai right now. Because how I have my operation set up. The places, the condos. That's new information that I yep. never heard somebody say in Dubai. I live in a all-inclusive hotel in Dubai that I only pay $50 a day for. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So yeah. is this one of the plays that you put in the playbook the that hotel you got? Play, yep. Yep. Oh, I, yeah. I have a relationship with a hotel manager. Gave me access to certain perks. Mm. And because it's all-inclusive, you get a maid. You get free food. Drinks, transportation, like most of the expenses that people have in their daily lives is taken care of. $50 a day between me and my wife, total. So Wait. <laughs> I haven't paid $3,000 a month. Wait. And you say two people cost $50, bro? Yeah, between me and my wife. In Dubai? Because we share the expenses. That's crazy. Yeah. Wait, what expenses? That's <laughs> $50. Right. So that's what I'm saying. We share the expenses. It's $50. So, so you're 25 each? I mean, I pay for everything. <laughs> I know I'm just messing. But, but I'm yeah. just playing, but like when you say share, like twenty, it's, I'm just thinking like, bro, like what expenses? What am I paying? Fifty dollars is nothing, bro. It's nothing, bro. Like <laughs> I spend three thousand dollars on a shirt. <laughs> like, that's why. Why do you think I was there so long? I, would stay. I was there for six months. People were like, yo, this boy must be spending hundreds of that. No, I'm running the play. Yo, no. yo, that just tells y'all y'all need to go get his book. Yeah. Tell him about that real quick. What are these plays that you have going on? So the philosophy is everything that you do in your life, you should document it. You should be able to make a living out of your living. So most people don't realize how much value they really have because they haven't documented what they've done. So when I go to Dubai and I come across relationships and I end up getting perks and hacks that most people don't get tapped to, the first thing I'm going to say is I know somebody wants to know this. Mm-hmm. If I tell somebody this story, they're either not going to believe it or they're going to want to do it. So let me go ahead and document the details with the receipts in a book, package it up. Whether I offer this information for free or I charge for it, it doesn't matter at this point, as long as it's documented. And then Mm -hmm. I'll decide what business model I want to run, revenue model I want to run. So that's what I did. I was hotel hopping. I lived in, I was in a hotel last year, almost 200 days out of the year. Wow. Throughout different countries from London, South Korea, Spain, Turkey, Dubai, different states throughout the U.S., experiencing different hotels, Mm. top tier hotels. And I'm showing the videos and people are asking, yo, how are you getting all these hotels? So I wrote a book on it, The Hotel Play. And my book wasn't a novel. It was simply Q&A. It's a Q&A playbook. Uh. I'm going to document every question that somebody's ever asked me Mm -hmm. when it comes to travel. I'm going to document questions that they don't know to ask me. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to answer them. That's the book. Interesting. Simple. Interesting. So you had a lot of routes that you could take that could lead you in a different direction than where you are right now. We're talking promoting... 
we're talking like you could have just solely done the tour business, solely done right. Airbnb, right. solely done even the Dubai play, right, and then right, right. could have just never even left Dubai if you For wanted sure. to. You could have had a totally different experience sure. than you are now. Like, where do you think you would be now if you were to take any one of those routes? Like, do you think that you would be in a different position than you are now? Um, of course, any route will take you usually to a different different areas of your life. But for me, because I'm very analytical, I love the process. Mm -hmm. I don't really stick to one play. I run the play, I maximize it, and then document it, and then I move on to the next. That's usually how it goes. But when I say move on to the next, I don't just abandon it. I usually mm -hmm. have it set up where it's still beneficial for me. Like automated, moved in a some, way where you yeah, don't some shape or form. To. Correct. Got you. So how many income streams does CEO Matty J have now? I have over 20 different opportunities during income. 20 different opportunities. Well, I like to focus on one. But if it organically presents itself, like, look, mm -hmm. this is the situation. We need help with this. Do they need help with this? If I'm able to organically present an offer, I'll be able to do so. So I actually have in my list of services a menu list of everything I can possibly do. Mm -hmm. Every possible way I've ever <laughs> generated income, I've documented it. All in the link in your bio, you mean? It's in. I have a document on my... Well, the link is in my bio, but I have right. a document on my Google Drive. Oh, like you physically have one. Yeah. Got you. I ask myself, what are all the services services that I can possibly offer. Mm -hmm. so that was my first step. So that's what I did. My second step was which services in this list do I actually want to offer? Right. Which ones do I do not want to offer? Mm -hmm. And which ones can be automated? Which ones like I'm really breaking it down mm -hmm. so I'm aware? So right. anytime I'm in a circumstance, I'm able to, in my brain, pull out the file that says, oh, this is the play that makes sense for this situation. This is the play that doesn't make sense for this situation. So that's how I ask the question as far as what services, offers, income streams do I have? I have over 20. Okay. So if someone was not in your position of 20 income streams, they're trying to get one, what play or what advice would you have for them? The first thing I would do is evaluate their life story. Mm -hmm. If somebody's ever interested in generating income, the first question I ask them is, have you interviewed yourself? Gotcha. Have you interviewed Viewed your life, identify what you've done in the past. Because it's kind of hard and difficult to identify what you want to do in the future if you haven't already evaluated right. what you've done already. Right, right. And because right. a lot of people aren't evaluating what they've done already, mm -hmm. what they do is they start chasing different plays that don't make sense for them, that don't align with what facts. they've already done. Facts, facts, facts. Even the values, yeah. Especially that. Yeah. So the first assignment and exercise that we have to do is sit down and for every year that you lived on this earth, we need to document what you've done. The highs, the mids, and the lows of your life. Whether it's business, whether it's leisure, we're going to document it. And through that exercise, there's a lot of realizations that happen. Like, dang, I forgot I did that. Dang, I do got skills there. Mm -hmm. Dang. All these realizations start to happen through the exercise for them to say, yo, I'm not going to run that play over there. I'm going to tap into what I already got going on over here. Yeah, you know, I did that. I remember you teaching that last year. Yeah. And I think it's called Splash. I think it's Splash. Called. Yep, that's yep. the acronym. I was doing that. There were some parts where I was like, man, I'm complete. I forgot. Like, mm -hmm. I was like, and there were exactly. some parts where I was like, man, I don't even remember some of the skill sets I even had then. There was like, my, our mom taught us how to, I was public speaking at eight and mm -hmm. it was cold calling at 11. Nice. So, like, that document was like, dang, like, no wonder I don't have stage fright. Mm -hmm. You get what I'm saying? So, like, public speaking is like natural mm -hmm. to me. Sales is natural to me. You get what I'm saying? Talking, being an extrovert, or, you know, I would consider myself an ambivert as well because sometimes I don't feel like being in front of people. But, like, I'm more extrovert than anything else. So, like, sure. being that person and documenting those things, it was like, man, it only makes sense for me to have a podcast. Amen. It only makes sense for me to to love public speaking. It only makes sense for me to make have a business, specifically the business that we're in right now. You get what I'm saying? Teach right. me able to create a family business. So, like, it makes sense. So, I, I highly suggest everybody to do the method or whatever. It's crazy when you analyze yourself. So, like, after you analyze yourself, like, how do you know which route you should take? So, after you document it, you analyze, you have your realizations, then you're, the goal is next is to identify, out of everything I've done, what brings me the most happiness, joy, mm -hmm. and peace. Right. Which opportunity have I been able to experience that's going to bring in, that has a market for income? Right, right. What experiences have I done that's going to bring a lot of impact to other people's lives? Mm -hmm. So, if I can evaluate the things I've done with a measure of impact, influence, influence, income and how much it brings me happiness joy and peace it'll start there got you and then you'll be able to know which route from those key principles correct and the rele gotcha. relevancy as well to the current marketplace is key as well like going through my storyline of the things i've done my first entrepreneurship endeavor was selling candy high school right i can make a living simply teaching my experience selling candy high school of course period yeah through coaching programs going on different stages teaching but things i learned through that process going to different high schools, teaching kids, mm -hmm. entrepreneurship, mm -hmm. just off of that story alone. Yeah. Versus 
me having to learn different new plays, I get different industries. All that is cool and dandy, but a lot of people are missing all on things that they've already done. One hundred percent. So I want to I want to take a massive left real quick, yeah, right? right? Because we talk about entrepreneurship, we talk about starting as an entrepreneur and then running all these plays. Then most people don't really talk about the mental health of entrepreneurship. Mm -hmm. You get what I'm saying? Like what it takes to actually be spiritually in tune, mentally in tune with yourself as an entrepreneur. So can you tell us like how do you harmonize with mental health, spiritual health, or even tapping into your spiritual self right so again a lot of the things and the blessings i've been able to have by god's grace i didn't intentionally do it, it like i was just in the right place right time and mm -hmm. one of the biggest pieces for mental health is environment of course i was raised in a very <clears throat> healthy environment i went to a high school that had healthy environment mm -hmm. i was around people just who had a healthier mindset which gave me examples of what looks good what feels good right what doesn't, things of that nature. So a lot of people come to me for business development. I'm like, oh, look, if you want to learn how to generate income, you have to do personal development first. For sure. Look, are you looking for a like-minded community of people who are trying to build a digital investment and digital entrepreneurship business? Well, look, we got some for you. You are listening to this podcast because you want to build a digital investment or become an entrepreneur. Well, look, we got a big community down below in the description. It's called the Digital Empire Patreon. This is something that only people who have joined and listened to this podcast. So this is an exclusive people. You have to listen to this podcast just to be able to get to this Patreon. OK, so go ahead, subscribe. It literally costs you less than a coffee. Get in. Go ahead and just join and get the free content that is a part of that. And I'm telling you, y'all, this content that I'm breaking down, I'm not putting out in public so you must join in order to get the exclusive stuff that i can't even say in public so look y'all just tap in just click the link but it's personal development is not sexy it's not at all it can be if you know how to run the play yeah i like, was about to say it can be fun it can be but like it's only fun for yourself it's not fun for everybody else for sure for sure <laughs> let's be real for sure so i had to figure out different techniques and marketing strategies to entice and make personal development attractive. Mm. Not the cliche, it's about your mindset. No, yeah, none of that. Yeah, I have to yeah, make yeah. it real fun. So I created like, even for my car rental program, it's not called cars, how to make millions of dollar cars. It's called cars and bars. Yeah, you came here to learn about cars, but we're going to learn about the real bars as well. And when it comes to the mindset it takes to run and operate these cars. Got you. The vehicle that leads to the vehicle. You made it more fun for people right. who wanted to, right. want to do that. Right, right, right. So and you made it catchy. Like how Marvel always likes to use the Peter Parker. You'll easily remember stuff right. like that. You got a stick. Yeah, so I think that's important too. So like, how do you tap into the spiritual side? I remember you, it was another podcast you were talking about how your religion, mm -hmm. right, plays a heavy role in the decisions that you make because sure. it, it aligns with your core values. So how do you allow your religious side to tap into the decisions that you make? Yeah, for sure. So just like I mentioned before, it's business development, but no, there's no business development without personal development. Mm -hmm. And there's no personal development without spiritual development. For sure. If you were to ask most people which one holds more importance and priority when it comes to the essence of life, mm -hmm. would it be your physical or spiritual most people will say spiritual for sure but if you were to ask that same person what do you do to develop your spiritual nature right most people don't have a real solid answer mm -hmm. i didn't have a solid answer again it just happened naturally somebody invited me to study the bible i'm a christian i subscribe to the bible mm -hmm. and as i was studying i started to realize dang these principles that are in this book that i subscribe to my life does not align with the teachings that are in this book right so once i started to value the information of the book I subscribe to, I started to be influenced to change my lifestyle. Mm. So one of the major things I changed was being all these places, being with different girls all over the place. It influenced me to get married. Right. And then that influenced me to stop doing certain things and engaging certain activities. And once I started going to church more actively, I started developing the principles of somebody who is Christ-like. Got you. That's so right. if someone wanted to be a Christian, because you only can speak on your own, of course, how would you suggest them to start Start learning and reading the Bible and becoming more sp spiritually in tune. That's a good question. So I subscribe to believe that the Bible actually teaches you where to go to study the Bible. Okay. Unfortunately, most people study religion in general based off of tradition mm -hmm. versus if you subscribe to a certain book, where does that book tell you to study the book? Mm -hmm. For example, I wouldn't ask for understanding about a Christian book from an atheist. Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> facts. That's one. Yeah, it's facts. So the question is, where do I need to go to study the Bible according to the Bible? 
And most people say church. Right. But there's thousands of different churches. And yeah, for sure. <laughs> Baptist, Lutheran, Seventh-day Adventist, Jehovah's Witness, Mormon, Catholic. The list goes long. And there's hundreds of them, actually. Right. I've come to the understanding that there's a very specific place and a way to identify that place mm -hmm. to have firm faith that this is the path that you're supposed to be walking. And that's what I ended up doing. I found that place, got locked in, influenced my business decisions greatly. Interesting. I saw the fruits of my labor mm -hmm. increase a thousandfold because I'm following these principles. Because I'm running a play. The play is in the in the Bible. The right. playbook is That's in the, the original. The play. original playbook. <laughs> if you stick to the script, no I count. guarantee you, your business, your relationships, your mental health, everything that you desire when it comes to generating and pursuing happiness, joy, and peace is there for sure. Even if you don't subscribe to religion, mm -hmm. if you just subscribe to the principles in that specific book guaranteed to influence your life and bring you an ROI. In order for them to even know where to learn it, they need to read the Bible in order to know where to go. Correct. There's a specific script. It says in Jeremiah chapter 3, verse 14, that God will bring you to a place called Zion, Holy Mount Zion. Mm -hmm. And there in that place called Zion, God will give you shepherds after God's own heart who will lead you with knowledge and understanding. Right. So if I don't go or find out what Zion is, I'm not going to be able to get the right knowledge and understanding and be led by the shepherds that God chose. Interesting. Yeah. So the question somebody then has to ask to follow up is, where is Zion? What is Zion? Is this a real place, physical place? Is it spiritual? Is it in your brain? Is it in your heart? Right. Those are the next questions somebody should ask. And then they'll do the research from there. Yeah. Well, the typical process is they discover this information from somebody who's already in Zion. Uh, and they're sharing, like, look, this is the process, the order of operation that we we're instructed to go through to help you increase your faith. And you've been there. Correct. hundred percent. I got invited. I was studying with somebody. I'm like, yo, where are you getting all these answers, these questions that I've been asking forever and nobody's been ever mm -hmm. like answer and show me through the Bible. And I was convinced and I'm very analytical. Right. I don't just make decisions off of feelings. Right, right, right. I need. You got to be logical. For sure. Mm -hmm. And even though the teachings I subscribe to are not popular at all. Like, I don't go to church on Sundays. That's not the popular way. Yeah, I don't yeah. celebrate Christmas. That's not the popular way. There's certain things I don't do that are not popular. However, I've come to understand why I don't do them and why I should do something else. Okay. I want to dive deeper into that. When you have children, yeah. how does a person pass on religious beliefs if that is the thing that you're you know that you're doing i mean of course you the, the idea is there for sure. but they could maybe deter and maybe believe whatever that they want to believe for sure but how how would you pass on that belief onto your onto your kids so that's actually my circumstance so i actually have two kids um prior to my wife and wait, with wait, two different yeah. mothers. Wait, wait. Yeah. I didn't even know you had kids. Oh yeah, yeah. I don't post them at all. Wait. <laughs> I don't post my, my family <laughs> at all. Yo, I had no idea. I was just speaking hypotheticals. Yeah, people do know though. Okay. okay. Now we know. Yeah. Okay, go I have, continue. I have a, a nine year old son in London and an eight year old daughter named Anaya. Two different moms. Wow. I was outside back in the day, man. You said you weren't in alignment then. Yeah, That's I wasn't in alignment. <laughs> And two different moms. My daughter's mom lives in Vegas. My son's mom lives in Fresno, California. Mm. And both of them don't subscribe to the faith I subscribe to. Interesting. So they both celebrate Christmas for the kids. So to answer your question, there's three ways to educate. I educate through example. Mm -hmm. I educate through, of course, the historical aspect of why people do it, where it came from, how it has benefits, how it doesn't have benefits, whether mm -hmm. it's aligned with God's will or not. Share that aspect. But also have grace and patience. And understanding that not everybody's going to follow what you subscribe to. Right, right, right. Right? So having that empathy, patience, communication skills, all gets tested when it comes to trying to lead your children in a path that you strongly believe in. Interesting. So you guide them, but you're not pressing them. Yeah, for sure. Got for you. sure. Okay, so you weren't in alignment then, but you're in alignment now. So how do you balance the children, the other family that you have, as well as the current wife that you have? And then also travel around and run the business that you do right now. Yeah, so just keep it <clears> harmony. <throat> keep it har I like the word harmony better than balance. There you go. Everybody said communication key. I study communication so I can make sure it's key. So the best way I use, I do harmonize my different blessings that I have throughout my life is 
communicating what my mission is, understanding what everybody else's mission is, and making sure it's aligned with one another. And then always having conflict resolution protocols. And that's a skill set on its own. That's a thing. That's a I took a whole set. course on it. I did too. You, you, you can take a course on it all you want at the end of the day. It's, still if you got, it's if, different. It's, Every Per person is different. It's different. You think that one thing is going to work over here, it's going to work over That's not how it works. And that's life. So I understand that as well. Being mm-hmm. logical, you can't treat everything logical. Because with women, they're, they're more on the emotional side. For sure. So, which is needed. Right. So like, I'm going to speak from personal experience. Yeah, for sure. With logic, there can be lack of empathy sometimes. For sure. But with women, it's all empathy. For sure. So where does the connection come in for a person that's 100% logical from a person that's 100% emotional? Understanding what true logic is. Okay. <laughs> okay. Now this is new. What, is, what does that mean? Always, did you ever watch Star Trek? Yeah. So you know the different characters. Yeah. And personality traits. 100%. So, as you know, the Vulcans, very logical. Yep. Lack empathy. Very much so. <laughs> Straightforward. <laughs> this one needs to be done. Black, the worst, white. actually. Right? And then we had different characters. Like, the Cap was really ambitious. He has an action personality. But all the different personality traits came together, and it'll work because they all have the same mission. Right, right, right. So the right. key thing is everybody has to be on the same mission. That's the first thing. If you don't on the same mission, no matter what, go through. It's not going to work if you're not on the same mission. Got you. The that second thing, as far as me understand what true logic is, was understanding that not everybody... <laughs> I'm having trouble with that right now. Yeah. <clears throat> and because I went, I started learning this in church, that you have to humble yourself mm. because logic will easily cause you to think that you know everything. Yep. Your way is right because you've done your due diligence. And nine times out of ten, you might be right. I do feel like sometimes I'll be right, bro. <laughs> I mean, you did the work to get the evidence, to get the data to say, this is what it is. Right. And emotional people usually don't have that data and they make their decisions or base their opinions without that data. So you, a lot of times there can be conflict. So learning and understanding that, okay, I understand why you have this perspective. Mm. It's because you don't have this data. And I'm not going to judge you for this. Arrogance will say, I know what I'm talking about. I did the work. You'll have all this mind. I'll be doing that. All the, everything that came out of my mouth is through experience. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know what you're talking about. And then when they don't do what you say you, you told them to do, you hit them with the I told you so. It causes even more <laughs> resentment. You get called a know-it-all and nobody likes being around know-it-alls. Right. Or... You try to suppress your information or your wisdom and not say anything at all. <laughs> <laughs> then you're like, yo, you don't care? You're not trying to help? It's like, I, I care, be- but then <laughs> when I, I care... <laughs> right, you don't want to run the plate the right way. It's like, it's, it don't make no sense. Right, so the biggest reason why I was struggling is through arrogance. I think church, Christianity, is actually a rehab center for arrogance. I think mm. the number one issue that mankind deals with Roots back to arrogance. Mm -hmm. Arrogance says, I know what I'm doing. I know what I'm talking about. I know what's right. I know what's wrong. Those are all the things that come from arrogance. On the other side of that coin is humility. Humility Mm -hmm. says, I don't know everything. I'm willing to be led. I'm willing to lead when I need to lead. Mm -hmm. I'm willing to understand that I'm not God. So I need to rely on God. For sure. So with that training that I've received in church, when it comes to humility building, I start to understand Mm -hmm more people and communicate way better. Where does that come from? Where does that drive of leadership come from? You're actually put in those positions naturally, organic in life. How you lead, how well you lead um, is then the next question after that. And so I have a lot of good examples. Again, me being in church, I think that's the foundation, the source. A lot of people go to resources. By God's grace, I have access to the source. Mm -hmm. So I see examples of good leadership and bad leadership. Mm -hmm. I saw what happens when you do good things and when you do bad things. Right. So all those stories in the Bible, events that I had in the Bible, I'm seeing examples. So when I'm put in a similar position, I know how to react. Interesting. A lot of people don't realize they react based off what they saw somebody else do. <laughs> That's facts. That's big facts. Yeah. So when they get disrespected, now you have an option. Well, how are you going to react? Most people re- respond with, I'm a grown amen. I ain't going to be talked like that. The reason why you responded that way is because you saw somebody else respond in that same exact way yeah. when they got disrespected. Facts. It's like we're duplicating literally. each other. Like, <laughs> literally, we might put our spin on things, but we're literally following somebody else's example. And it's been happening since we've been children. I saw a parent get mad at their child for cursing. Where do you think that child learned it from? Right. I'm like, you think a child was born like born <laughs> with learning how born to born with cuss words? Just came out the womb, right. just cussing at people. Just they learned it from the parent. Right. Granted, there's situations where they might learn it from every different schools, yeah, from other TV, friends. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The parent is a, a, a source of the initial influence. 
And where they learn things from. So that's where they learn the language. That's where they learn everything. For sure. So, like, where does CEO Matty J see himself in the next three to five years? So, I have a principle, a philosophy that I like to plan no further than a year. Interesting. Life, especially with technology, it changes so quickly. Yeah, fast, yeah. And not to say that I shouldn't have a long-term mission. Mm -hmm. I have a long-term mission. Okay. For sure. Spiritually, which is to enter the kingdom of heaven Mm -hmm. and follow God, fear God and follow God's commandments so I can be able to enter the kingdom of heaven and be the 144,000. But when it comes to like five-year plans, 10-year plans, I like to narrow down to a year plan. Mm -hmm. So my year plan to answer the question is to help influence more than a thousand people to realize the importance of creating their documentary. Interesting. What does influence mean? Educating them, inspiring them, and motivating them to do something that I know is going to create drastic change in their life and for in other people's lives around them. And I'm guessing you're documenting that too. Correct. So for like sure. what number are we at right now? We had a good 30, 32. 32. Okay. Yeah, I've seen a lot of people, and I think network marketing is a, is a great example of duplication of... Yeah, it's lit. They have the blueprint of how to duplicate themselves onto somebody else. For sure. So I feel like what a lot of people lack when it comes to building successful people is duplication. Or they don't document how they received it to get the duplication. So you have the blueprint of how you became me. You. Yes. So it's easy for you to duplicate it to somebody else. For sure. So... Going back to personality types, your personality type may be different than somebody else's. Sure. It's like four different types of personality types. For sure. So how can you duplicate somebody with a different personality type? For sure. So my goal isn't to duplicate somebody. My goal is to allow them to be aware of possibilities and opportunities. Gotcha. And share my story on how I did it. So usually whenever you're in a circumstance or issue, you have options on how to react. Right. Most people, they usually react on what they've experienced in the past, but there's more options than that. You could do this, 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 this. And my job is to let them know what options they have, mm. what opportunities they have, and use that as a, allow that to become a mindset. So anytime you're in a situation, what are my options on how I should react to the situation? And I know that reaction isn't just a sole one person. For right? sure, for sure. You always want to either have a team or for you have sure. a partner. For sure. So, like, how does your wife play in that in that regard? Yeah, so spiritually, we are aligned on our mission. Me and my wife have two different type of personality types. <laughs> we share common interests, but we naturally have a natural order to react a different way. Mm-hmm. But the beautiful thing about us, our communication and transparency with each other is she understands how I would really act in a certain situation yeah. and why, not just how, why. Okay. And that will play a role on how she reacts and vice versa. Got you. And there's a lot of compensation there. Even though she'll do something a certain way, consideration is the word I'm looking for. A lot of consideration on things on both of our sides. She thinks of you before she does. So, like, is that where the mindset of women get upset for you comes from? Uh, Or they get the emotion. Like, let's say you don't tap into the emotion, but they tap into the emotion first. Is that, like, where that that. consideration comes in first? For sure. I can see that. I can see that a thousand percent. It happens a lot in any relationship, to be honest with you. Okay. So... How can someone even get in touch with you? How can they tap in with you? Because I think of it as a universe. You have different solar systems. Right. There's a lot of different versions of you, a lot of different areas of... Multiverses. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? So how can somebody tap into you knowing that you do a lot of different things? Like, tell them where they right. can tap into. So I like to usually let people know that there's different values that I provide. Depending mm-hmm. on who you are, I can be a different person. Like, mm-hmm. literally, multiverses is right. a different version for a different situation. But my main hub to find the main character socially on social media is my Instagram. And through my Instagram, depending on what post I make, can funnel you into a situation where, oh, I didn't know I needed that. Let me tap in here. Or mm-hmm. I didn't know I need this. Or I need this. I'll be able to funnel you in the direction that where I can provide value depending on the situation and alignment. So my Instagram is CEO Matty J. Mm -hmm. Came up with that moniker because my name is Matthew Jr. So I go by Matty J. And CEO came from me when 2 chains and my boy Charlie started a brand called CEO Millionaires. It means create every opportunity. So we put CEO in front of our name and I kept it. So CEO Matty J on all platforms where I share my stories. And through my stories, I help people with any opportunity they need to be able to Increase their influence, income, and impact. Look, y'all heard it here best, man. Yes, sir. <laughs> y'all heard it here best. I'm surprised you ain't got a YouTube, man. I need help. With YouTube? I need help. I want to be talent. I need a full production team. I don't got to do no <laughs> thinking, but show up. 
That's, that's what look, I need. So y'all heard, y'all got to tap in with my man. We this is a great conversation, bro. This is. Amen. I feel like I Appreciate wanted to get you. something, get some fresh, some different, bring to the table. But I also like let it. them know where you coming from. You get what I'm saying? So, look, is generational wealth and legacy building something that you've been trying to do? Is legacy building something that seems hard? Is something that you know is far fetched? Well, look, I got something better for you that'll literally change the game and how you view things. We are coming out, and it's already there. Literally, click the link below. We have something called a free family business workshop. This is a free training that's literally going to show you from A to Z on how to build legacy, what legacy means to us and what legacy should mean to you all. And guess what the method is based off of? The Rockefeller method. Have you wanted to make $600 billion just like the Rockefellers? Is this something that you've been struggling to do? Well, look, we got the best thing on the planet. The family business workshop is the way to go. So I'm telling you, click the link below, join that family business workshop, learn the Rockefeller method the right way because we're literally doing the exact same thing that they're doing. The whole life policy, the trust, the ministry trust, the family trust, the private trust, showing you how to build everything from the ground up. This is what we're going to be doing. But look, y'all heard here best. Y'all already know that this is what we bring to the table. Welcome to the Digital Empire podcast. Once again, like, comment, subscribe, and I will tune you in and see you guys in the next one. Yes, sir.